Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzuda7 here again, and welcome to another RuneScape 3 video here today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Hetz Oasis update, which was announced uh, the other day. I want to go ahead and go over the details that they released. There are quite a lot of new things coming with this update, and the update is actually being released on January 6th. So the first Monday in January, we'll be getting this new update. And yeah, I was honestly quite surprised with the amount of stuff coming with this, um, and this is actually the removal of the dual arena uh, as well. Like that is what this update is going to be causing, the removal of the dual arena, and it'll be replaced by this new uh, area called Hetz Oasis. So yeah, um, before I get into the article, I just wanted to let you guys know, I am going back home for Christmas. Um, I'm leaving on Thursday and then coming back on Tuesday of next week. So I won't have any uh, hardcore episode this weekend because of that. Um, I'll probably schedule this video actually to upload on like Friday or something. And um, yeah, that's the plan. And then I'll be back on Tuesday. If they do have anything on Monday, which they definitely won't, I will make a video when I get back. Um, and the only other thing is there's apparently a rumor or maybe it's even been confirmed that the Christmas wrapping paper uh, rates will be buffed um, on and after Christmas Day. So yeah, kind of weird. I wonder if the event goes longer than only December, but either way, we'll have to see. Uh, without further ado, I'm just going to be doing like, again, uh, incense sticks uh, in the background at the moment um, and, you know, go over the article here. So I'll pull it up right now onto the screen. And as you can see, introducing Hetz Oasis, big article title there, and it is in the future updates category. Um, basically, they say that uh, an earthquake is going to destroy the dual arena and um, that's it's going to be gone from the game. And I think it's good that the dual arena is being removed. Um, I think everybody pretty much agrees that it shouldn't uh, be around anymore. It was just a bad thing for the game. So I'm glad to see them uh, going through with the um, the path to removing it. Uh, and I guess this is it for those of you who are interested in the story. This is going to advance the current storyline of you know Elder, Elder God Wars and everything. Um, and it's involving Ichthlaren. I think that's how you say that uh, that god's name. But um, yeah, so that should be pretty cool. And yeah, let's go ahead. Oh, it's actually January 4th. My mistake. Uh, sorry for saying the wrong thing earlier. Um, I thought for some reason January 6th was a Monday. I don't know why, but that's wrong. And January 4th isn't even a Monday. January 4th is a Tuesday. So um, yeah, that's kind of weird. I'm not sure if... I guess maybe the events starts on the Tuesday, but the update comes on the Monday, or maybe the update's just coming on the Tuesday. Whatever, let's just uh, continue on here. Um, basically, right when this update comes out, there's gonna be a two-week event that starts with the release of it called the Oasis Restoration. And this is basically gonna kind of, it sounds like it's gonna be a little bit similar to like the, uh, the Stormbreaker event that was around when Anachronia was being released. Basically, a similar like token-based, event but it's like themed around a current update like we needed to build that ship or whatever to get to anachronia because of some you know forces blocking the ability to get there this is, sounds like it's in a similar vein like this whole um event will be based around restoring this oasis that is going to be replacing the dual arena and that is starting when it comes out and there will be daily tasks to complete and you can get some cosmetics and other things that we'll get into here in a second um, but there's also going to be multiple new skilling methods that are going to be permanent with this update and two new mini quests. So um, it's not just the event. The event is just a part of this pretty huge update. So the first thing they get, go into details on here is the limited time event. Again, it is a two week long event where you'll be clearing up the shattered dual arena to create a glistening desert paradise. There is a community chest where you can unlock both individual and community rewards by completing tasks or doing the skilling activities that will be around the Oasis. So again, quite similar to a lot of these events that we've seen in the past where you can contribute and get some individual rewards. Then there's an overall community bar that increases slowly that unlocks rewards for everybody. So yeah, um, I think it's cool that they're having this alongside the release of the update. Um, there's also those two new mini quests, which is this next section. Um, they're called Eye of Het 1 and 2. The first one will be available right when the update comes out, and then the second one will come out the following week on January 10th. So yeah, that's pretty cool. 
uh, some new lore for the Elder God War storyline. And um, yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of them continuing it on that uh, vein. I wonder what uh, the rewards will be, if any, from there. Um, and then we have a section for the skilling that's going to be available. And there are quite a lot of different things for skilling. A new agility course in which you'll traverse the rubble of the ruined duel arena, which sounds kind of cool. Um, I doubt it's going to be competitive with like Anachronia course. And um, personally for me, in terms of agility, I just like the Anachronia course so much better because it's like a long lap. Um, I doubt I doubt something around the duel arena will be a very long lap. And I just, I don't like the short agility courses as much. Um, you're also going to have a new hunter method available where you control a crocodile that swims around catching scarabs in the oasis that sounds kind of weird uh we'll have to see how that goes but there's going to be six scarabs uh in increasing hunter level to catch and um they say they're customizable so i guess you it, it kind of sounds like jadinko's a little bit like the herblore habitat you can uh change the, sh the scarabs that are around by storing flowers in various spots around the oasis so yeah, it basically sounds like the way the Jodinko Herbal Habitat works. Um, hopefully it's not, I don't know, the same because that, that always kind of annoyed me dealing with all that stuff. Um, there's also a new farming method here with um, passively tending flower bushes and harvesting new types of flowers, which are going to be available. Uh, that includes five new flowers and also four different bushes, each requiring a higher farming level. So quite a lot of different skilling content here, agility hunter and farming. So definitely some interesting stuff. And th there's more details on that uh, as we scroll down here. So first of all, um, we have the rewards for the mini quest, which I know I mentioned, uh, I wondered what the rewards will be. Uh, I read through this two days ago when it came out, totally forgot that they actually had posted these here. So good that we get to get into these. Um, but the first thing, uh, I have Het 1, the one that comes out at the very beginning of the uh, re release of the update, only gives a medium XP lamp, so not great, but still going to have some lore there. The second part gives another medium XP lamp and also a new archaeology relic, actually, that's going to be available called the Blessing of Het. And this will increase the healing you get from food and potions by 10%. And that's actually kind of a lot. So obviously, uh, we all know Bruise heal for 1,000. That's going to heal for 1100 now. I mean, that's it's not a huge difference, but it's still like pretty big. Uh, and then I think Super Sarah Brews heal for 1300, so those will heal for 1430. So I mean, that's that's pretty big increase as well. And then you have like um, the Primal Portions from Primal Pe Feasts will heal for 2750. So that is actually crazy. Um, I think. No, Sailfish Soups are actually even more, 2,600. Those will heal for, um, what is it, 2,860. So if you have a Sailfish Soup and a Super Sarah Brew with this relic, you will heal for 4,290 in with, with, a, with a soup and a brew. Uh, so that is a huge healing burst. And, I mean, the relic itself, if you add that onto the Sailfish Soup, that's like better than an entire new tier of food that was released like before we had selfish soups we had rocktail soups which healed for 2500 then selfish soups came out they heal for 100 more but with this relic you're getting 260 more of healing on top of that so it's actually a pretty big effect um but of course it's not dps related so it'll be hard to see if that'll fit into the meta anywhere um and one thing, I mean, I really hope that they do do they do address something with archaeology relics. Um, and I, I realize you guys couldn't see me looking at the uh, the foods there, but uh, the numbers are what I said basically. I'll, I'll quickly hide that. Um, these are the foods I was talking about. The primal portions are um, twenty five hundred. Selfish soups twenty six hundred. But um, yeah, regardless, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I wanted to pull out my archaeology cape really quick here. Um, I really do hope they change something about archaeology relics so that you can have at least two sets, maybe. Like, you can have two sets of them filled out. So, like, I have Heightened Senses, Fear of the Small, and this I just have this on because I, for the very reason why I would like two sets, because I don't feel like switching it out a lot. And um, this would ideally be, what, like Death Ward or something? I don't even know what the meta uh, relics are, but... 
Ideally, this would be another combat-based one. And then I wish I could have another set of three that was three skilling-based ones or, you know, whatever other ones that I wanted. And then I could swap between those for, like, a reduced chrono cost. Because having to completely swap out relics every time for s such a large amount of chronos, it just feels bad to do. And, um, yeah, with them adding this new relic, I hope they do address that in some way because I've just not, I've never been a fan of the system the way it is now. I think having two or three sets of uh, relics that are pre-selected that you can swap between for a cheaper amount of chronos would be a good approach. And then if you wanted to actually swap out the relics that are on your list of the preset ones that you've already picked out, it would cost as it normally does. Um, so, I mean, I think that makes a little bit of sense to, to maybe go down that route. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about that in the comments. It's been discussed on Reddit quite a bit. But anyways, back to the article. Um, like I said, that relic does sound pretty strong. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll see if it actually ends up being useful or not. It obviously depends a lot on how much it does cost in terms of relic power to use. So again, we will wait and see on that. Um, they have some of the rewards from the event here. First of all, you can get a title and um, this armor, which honestly I think looks pretty ugly. Um, it just, it doesn't really look like a set of armor at all. Um, it's like the top is green and then you got the blue bottom and the blue mask. I don't know, it just looks really ugly in my opinion, but that's just me. Uh, and then you have what everybody's raving about on Reddit, these gators shoe overrides. Uh, they do look pretty funny. And I know I'm sure a lot of people will be sporting those at the uh, at the event. And you can also get this crocodile pet uh, called Chomper, which, I mean, the model looks really good in my opinion. They, they've been, they do a really good job with the, the pet models and stuff nowadays. Um, I think it looks great. Uh, and then they also have this weirdly decorated version. I don't know if that's a skin you have to unlock in some way, but that is, uh, I guess, going to be available as well. Um, there's also going to be uh, a drop enhancer available, which they list. They said right here, there'll be a drop enhancer for the Elder God Wars dungeon, which sounds interesting, but when you read about how it actually ends up working, it's a little bit lame in my opinion. Basically, you can gather drop enhancer fragments by skilling from the Oasis activities. You can then combine them to make an inactive drop enhancer, that inactive drop enhancer is tradable, um, and I'm not sure if that means it can be traded on the GE or not, but it is tradable between players at least, and you can then use that to turn it into an untradable activated version, and if you have that activated version worn, importantly it says worn here, so I'm not sure if that means you actually have to wear it or if you can just bring it in your inventory like every other enhancer that is in the game. Uh, you'll get a 10% increased chance of unique drops from the Elder God Wars dungeon. And it does say specifically this only applies to unique boss drops only, not normal drops, and only from the bosses. So that sounds pretty cool overall. I mean, a, a tradable, uh, if people just want to camp Elder God Wars, they don't even have to bother with the event. They can buy the enhancers off other people. But you'll see right here it says all drop enhancers are removed at the end of the event, which I think makes this a little bit lame. Like if someone wants to participate in the event and they would also want to do Elder God Wars, you know, afterwards, they kind of have to pick which one they want to would rather do. Because if you don't use the drop enhancers during the event while it's going on, they're gone. So I think what they should do absolutely is allow you to get the enhancers during the event for the two weeks. And then, you know, then after the event is over, you can't make the enhancers anymore. And then, you know, but they the ones that are already there, they stick around. I don't see any harm in that personally, but maybe there's some balancing reason they want to remove them all or some other technical reason. I don't know. Just seems like it would make more sense so that people who wanted to do both could do both and wouldn't have to, you know, either just pick one or the other or split their time. Um, but regardless, yeah, that's that's the way it works right now. We'll see if they do change anything like that. But overall, 10%. Drop chance increase is pretty good. So definitely look out for those if you're trying to get any of the collections from Elder God Wars right now. Moving on now to the skilling uh, places. There is a new familiar called the Holy Scarab Familiar, which is from the Hunter Scarabs. They drop scarab shells and they can be used to craft this new summoning familiar. It requires five scarab shells, a green charm, and 154 spirit shards to make this familiar. And it is a level 80 summoning. 
Uh, and basically, it has the passive effect where while it is summoned, you will have your prayer points drained more slowly. So I assume it probably just gives you some sort of a numerical prayer bonus like gear. Um, but that sounds pretty good. I mean, there's I'm trying to think of, you know, different things you might use prayer for. I don't really know, like where you wouldn't be bringing a familiar for other things. And I don't really know, maybe to like Slayer, if you're not, um, you know, using a deep Ripper Demon or a Yak or anything, you could bring this thing along and it would save you some prayer potions. Um, it also has a special move, you know, it's, it's special move scroll is called Bone Conjure and it will add a random bone to your inventory. So that doesn't sound very useful, but I mean, kind of interesting, I guess. So yeah, interesting new familiar. Definitely will be important how much it actually reduces prayer drain by. Um, so we'll have to wait and see, but it sounds like it could be pretty cool for, you know, especially for things like, you know, super heat form, uh, skilling and stuff like that, you know, could be good for, uh, for, for various things like that. So new familiar there. Um, and then we have these prayer powders, which, um, kind of sounds similar to incense sticks, but, um, basically the scarab shells can be ground down into prayer powders which can be scattered to give you a 30 minute boost to specific things. For the powder of defense, it gives an additional plus two defense boost to the uh, the prayer the, the skin prayers from the normal prayer book, which is pretty much useless, I would say. The powder of protection boosts the damage protection to 60% from your protection prayers. So that is pretty good but that effect is already available on the Amulet of Souls or Essence of Finality, which is a very high priority purchase for pretty much anybody who wants to do any sort of PVM because it is an all styles amulet, especially the EOF when you have that spec ability. It is very, very strong. So, And this has been confirmed by Jagex to not stack with the EOF. So pretty much dead on arrival in terms of being anything useful for PVM. Unfortunately, unless you're quite low level or poor and don't have an Amulet of Souls, then you could use this to get that extra protection. I think what they should do is lower the amount by a lot to like 1% or 2% increase and then let it stack. Obviously, having an additional 10% increase on top of the existing would make 70% protection everywhere, and that would be pretty broken, especially because you could get an additional 10% for Arch Glacor from your Pontifex Ring. Um, so yeah, it definitely shouldn't stack as is, but I just think they should drastically lower the amount of, uh, increase and then allow it to stack because as it is, that's kind of lame that people, you know, high level people won't be using it and it won't be, you know, it won't make it a good skilling method if people aren't going to be using it. So yeah, that's just my opinion. I think they should definitely lower it a lot to one or 2% and then just let it stack. Um, cause then people will, people will definitely use it. Because it's just that that little bit more strong, uh, but not you know not game breakingly so. Uh, so yeah, kind of hope they change that one. The next one is the powder of item protection, which lets you protect one extra item when using the protect item prayer. So yeah, I guess that's good for dying. I don't know. I don't really uh, haven't really given this one too much thought. Maybe good in the wild for uh, for people that you know that are out there. But um, I was reading on Reddit, I think it won't actually change too much because there's already enough things you can use such that you reach the item protection limit. And apparently there is some limit in the wild. I don't know what it is, but yeah, that is, um, apparently it's not going to be a huge shakeup, but and just another ad additional way to make that possible. Uh, the powder of pulverizing grinds all bones in your inventory when using the ectofunctus. Now that sounds really good, honestly, because the Ectofontis actually does give you more prayer XP than a Gilded Altar with two lit burners, I'm pretty sure. So it might actually be best to use the Ectofontis now. Right, let me check really quick, sorry for the typing. I just wanna verify that, I'm pretty sure. And the reason, you know, obviously nobody would have used it before is because it takes an actual eternity to grind your bones so long it's crazy um let's see here where does it say uh it already says here that you should use ashes here because you don't need to grind them so that makes a lot of sense um i'm trying to see what they say about versus gilded altar let me just control f 
for gilded altar. Um, with all these, oh, apparently there, it says there are enough reliable XP boosts for prayer available that a gilded altar with all these boosts gives 0.7% more XP than the Ectophantus. So, yeah, I guess you, um, if you have like every single prayer boost imaginable, then it is, um, it is not going to be better, but probably there's a bunch of things in there that you know, not everybody will have that they're considering. So regardless, I think this will probably be pretty good for, uh, especially for people who, you know, either don't have a gilded altar or whatever like that. Um, I think it'll be a good thing. And it also help you get your, um, your prayer outfit quicker because you need to get a thousand tokens per piece. So that one sounds pretty good to me. The powder of burials boosts prayer XP by 250% when burying bones. Uh, pretty much useless. I can't see any reason to use that. Maybe throw it on when you're going on a Slayer task where you're going to use Bone Crusher, I guess, if you want that extra prayer XP. And then we have the Powder of Penance, which restores prayer points equal to 2.5% of damage received. And how much does the Penance Aura do? 5%. So it's half as good as the Penance Aura, which is actually a pretty strong effect, honestly, since it's just an additional thing that you can have. Um, so... That would be interesting. Um, like, it's kind of one of those things, like, there's no reason not to use it. Saves you prayer. Um, so I wonder if you can have all of these active at the same time. They don't actually say anything about that. But, um, yeah, that one, I guess, pretty interesting. We'll see how that uh, how that does. And, uh, yeah, those are the prayer powders. So overall, some pretty cool ideas in there. I do hope they change the powder of protection to make it better. Um, and the powder of pulverizing will be good to see how that does. So... Yeah, I like those quite a bit actually. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how they end up being. Next up, we have honeycomb. All right, sorry about that. I had to take a quick break to grab a drink of water. But honeycombs here. There's going to actually be new honeycombs from these new flowers that we're going to be able to use at Player Own Farm. And everyone probably knows existing honeycombs not super useful. The yellow and red ones are good for getting your animals' happiness and health up if you didn't feed them. But the other ones are pretty much useless. These ones all sound. Pretty good. Um, you have this fertile one, which boosts breeding chance. It doesn't say by how much, but or for how long, or pretty much anything. And there's pretty much no details about how they actually work, but that sounds like it'll be good. I mean, just base boost to breeding chance. Uh, the candied honeycomb gives the high chance for offspring to have the joyful trait, which is a very good trait that makes it so that your um, your animal's happiness never goes down. Then you have the nutritious honeycomb, which gives a high chance to have the immune trait, which is also a very good trait, which allows them not to get diseased and never have their health go down. If you have a combination of joyful and immune, then you'd never have to feed that animal, and it will stay happy and healthy and can breed and make more, uh, more offspring. So two very, very strong perks to have on animals. It's going to be really nice to have the ability to get them more often. Then you also have the more-ish honeycomb, great name there, gives a high chance for them to have multiple traits. So you use all three of those honeycombs on, you know, one, one breeding cycle, and bam, you got a joyful immune offspring just like that. Um, sounds like, so that'll be pretty cool to have the ability to at least try for. And then the shimmering honeycomb gives a high chance for the offspring to be shiny, which is also, of course, very good for breeding logs and stuff, so... Some really great new honeycombs here. It'll be uh, important to know how much this actually affects things, like what the actual percentages are and these chances and things like that. But uh, uh, overall, sounds great to me. Um, it'll be interesting as well to see how long these flowers actually take to get. Um, and that's everything, but they do have requirements listed here. So the agility for the dual arena course will be level 65. So maybe it'll be decent uh, as like a bridging of the gap between like Apatol and, um, you know, getting to Prif, although they already have the empty throne room bike throne room bikes for that. So we'll just have to see how much uh, XP per hour there is and if there's any additional reward for doing it, like at Anachronia with the, uh, the codexes or anything like that. Um, the farming, the flowers will be level 30, 50, 70, and all the way up to 90, those five different flowers. And then the six different scarabs, there are six, right? Although there's, there's only five levels listed here. But the scarabs will be 
even at the, there'll even be one available at level one, level 30, 50, 70, and 90. So yeah, some pretty good content across all levels for farming and hunter and a mid-level agility method. And then for the uh, mini quests, the first one will require City of Sentiston quest, which is pretty high level and also 65 agility. And then the second one just requires the first one. So yeah, that is pretty much it, you guys. Some pretty sweet looking stuff coming with this update. I'm looking forward to it quite a lot. I'll of course be covering everything on the day of release. I'll probably make a guide for the first part of the mini quest and um, you know, just go over how, you know, what details there are, if anything changed from this initial post, as well as, you know, how to do the hunter, what the agility course is like, everything pretty much. I'll have a big, you know, it'll be a nice, uh, pretty good release day. I'm looking forward to this a lot. Um, and I'll also be testing out all these honeycombs to see what they actually do and how hard the flowers are to get. I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments on this upcoming update. Uh, and I hope you guys are all staying safe out there for Christmas. I know the new uh, variant is really spreading like wildfire out there. So make sure you stay safe and uh, enjoy your holidays. And yeah, I will... Uh, I'll see you guys when I get back from my short little vacation up to, you know, back home. And I uh, hope you guys all enjoy your holiday. And uh, let me know your thoughts on this pretty sweet looking upcoming update down in the comments. Peace out, guys.